Conversations around the Africa we want, a continental blueprint to transform Africa into a global powerhouse of the future, is gaining traction, as set out in Agenda 2063. Maponga says this requires honest conversations around African cultures, religion and spirituality, and the unification of education systems, and how these can shape the mindsets of Africans. Also looking at the issue of indigenous medicines, there's enough resource on the ground to begin to have, and COVID I think has taught us, but we can't be waiting for Madrid and Pfizer's to be giving us their prescription of what it is like. If we are real serious, it is now to gather our own African indigenous medical staff, both indigenous and academic. So can we begin finding solutions to some of these problems, like high tech, to that end? That makes the whole Africa our pharmaceutical space where these things can be found. Religious oppression on another level. If the Chinese had colonized Namibia, maybe all of us would have been Buddhists. If the Muslims had been here, maybe all of us would have been Muslims. Tanzania, Kenya, Libya, you know, Algeria, Egypt have fallen into the hands of the, the the Muslims. So by us literally saying we are Christians, we also need to put it into context that it is not by choice. <laughs> the religion of choice of the colonial system is this. So we need an intellectual conversation also that says, as Africans, what is our spirituality based on? Are we doing fine with a colonial religious mindset that divorces itself from ourselves? How do we marry the two now that we say we are Christians and our culture? And last but not least, it will be the educational unification. How do we begin to develop curriculums that speak to us as Africans? I can't be sending children at this age to go and study William Shakespeare, to go and study Julius Caesar. Africa has so far made progress in the establishment of regional economic communities such as SADC, EAC, ECOWAS and COMESA. This was envisioned by Tanzania's founding president Julius Nyerere, founded on the vision shared by Ghana's first president and Pan-Africanist Kwame Nkrumah in 1958 of a united Africa. So to talk about the human government now is a little bit of a dream still so far. It must be a dream, but we are not even allowing free movement of Africans. We have decided in Namibia and Botswana to use that, that ID card. We have decided here, and we in Namibia, some Yoma, President Yoma, as you said, are the first one to sing the AU answer, AU flat. All these years, first country. Now we are saying we are going to give ID cards to everybody, no ones. But then there's an ID card for so called refugees. We said, I announced it, it will be African guest. But we have to go through the Ligmaro. Being cleared. But once they get it, once they get UNHCR declaring as such, we will not call them refugees, we must call African yes. guests. Wow. That's now our card to say that. Mm -hmm. Small things are done, but uh, you see, we look about African Union, we are still far, far apart. <coughs> Culturally, you said, uh, Francophone Africa is different. Maponga's brief visit to State House saw the two nations agreeing that platforms are needed to regularly remind the youth and politicians of the importance of Africa's voice and the quest for total economic liberation. I'm, I'm optimistic. You have to be optimistic in anything you do, otherwise you're going to succeed. We have a long way to go. Long, long way. And the, the so you, the professors from outside, can help us. But you see, don't say outside politics. I'm a politician. Who gets what, how and when? It's that a politician. So you cannot do away with politics. Come and join politics. And then you bring in your views. That, that's very important. And I think, to add on that, thank you for raising that background. The Ukraine-Russia war and the involvement of the NATO, the Security Council issues, will also speak against us and yeah. constantly expose us as Africans. Yes. One of the pillars, again, of this concept I have is how about we put up uh, one big army around Africa, which can guarantee us a seat at least at the Security Council. Because if you go there as countries, South Africa, Namibia, Zimbabwe, you're not even worth talking to. 